So I'm going to call us to order. All right, calling the meeting to order at 6.34. Um, agenda items are, one moment, oh, just in time, Mark, we just called to order. Um, nope, it's just us. So in the room we have myself, Evan, Duncan and Mark. We have agenda items of bids for re debris removal, Vermont Community Foundation donation. Are there any other agenda items? So to push and accept bids. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Okay. So we have now we have a go ahead, Evan. Do you want to discuss information? Yep. I'm just typing them down and I am going to copy the agenda and put it out in Zoom. Um, Okay, so for agenda items, oops, I lost the numbers in the first two, but that's okay. Bids for debris removal, Vermont Community Foundation donation, additional added, uh, I don't know why I added that. Um, Beth or Evan, <laughs> I'll do this better next time. Uh, Beth or Evan to work with potential item, potential action. Beth or Evan to work with attorney on EDA grant letter. Oh, not Carl, yep. Hilarious. I just hit it with bangs, that's all. Okay, I'm going to just repost with correct agenda. Okay, there's the correct agenda. Yeah, we're on Zoom-ish, like you're kind of far away, but that's okay. Um, so first up, bids for debris removal. We have one bid in from the RFP that went out, and that, that bid is from Casella. Just pull it up. That's um, Tony spray. Gotcha. So it is. So the bid is for $200 per hour per truck. Uh, they're expecting three trucks uh, to be deployed, uh, and the additional cost is $164 per ton. Uh, the, the amount of tonnage 
is not known uh, at this point. Will you turn your mic on in case it's not I on? I did. Okay, good. Can you hear me? Like, uh, I'm no, not, it's okay. I'm not muted in Zoom or on my. Perfect. Um, so uh, we did circulate an RFP. Uh, Carl and Ron worked on that, and this was the only bidder. Uh, I'm going to motion uh, authorizing the chair to execute the bid from Casella for $200 per hour per truck, uh, three trucks being deployed, and $160 per ton, understanding that we don't know the exact tonnage coming out of this. Duncan is seconded. Okay, we have much in a second. Any discussion? The other thing I want to say is that um, there's a side note that Casella is subcontracting Myers and um, Hill. They just say Hills, but... Um, I forgot the name of the company. What is the name? Hillside Trash. Yeah. Hillside Trash. Yep. Um, but they're subcontracting both of those. So they'll each have a truck running through, but it won't change the bid pricing. The back, back approach. Everything is the same. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Next agenda item is Vermont Community Foundation donation. Do you have, a, do you have the update on that? Because um, Ron called me. Was that email? Uh, it probably wasn't because he called me. I can tell you what it is. Uh, yes, if you could tell us that, and I think that would be helpful. Sure. Um, an application has been made to the Vermont Community Foundation. Um, as of five o'clock this afternoon, um, Ron had talked with them. They are making the uh, formal determination on Tuesday. Um, Johnson is, as Ron put it, on the list, and we could expect anywhere from twenty-five hundred dollars to five thousand dollars if we are successful. And the list is. Flood relief awards, or what is the list? The list is that special grant program that Vermont Community Foundation put together for flood, flood related assistance. Okay. And I forget which, which specific grant. That's good it news. Is. I don't think we need a motion to accept grant money, do we? I don't know. That's a good update on a positive. No, I think that clears that agenda item. Yeah, I think the intent is to. Uh, at this point, I'll say it's the intent would be to cover unmet costs from FEMA or BEM. That's a one of the issues with FEMA and their real stickers on debris removal. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but they are. And they're basically saying right now that the, the dumpster or the trash pickup needs to be within the highway right of way, the public right of way. Um, so as long, I think as long as we can demonstrate that, um, we should be good. Should we do uh, I think that's a good idea. I'm I'm going to be leading one of the teams. We should have that an agenda item tomorrow morning to just remind people. So. Okay, just gonna make a note of that so I don't forget. Over the two original agenda items, right? Next is Beth or Carl to work with attorney on EDA grants. So could you just give us a quick rundown? Yeah. I, I can, and that was part of Roland's phone call to me as well. Um, he got a call from Seth Jensen at LCPC, who is working on the EDA grant application for us. And one of the requirements for the grant application is that we provide a municipal attorney letter 
basically saying that the town has the capacity to borrow or bond for automating the yeah, This is probably something that our municipal attorney has done five hundred times. So it's, it's pretty standard. Uh, okay. So I would move the um, we authorize that and our colonel to work with the municipal attorney to issue such a letter for uh, that EDA grant application. Move second. Uh, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Um, sounds good. Next up is authorized death for Evan to, to push RFPs and accept bids on a temporary basis. Want to do 30 days or 60 days or something? Temporary, just like 60 days? It can. It's up, like, I think, I don't know. It could just be flood related only items. Uh, yes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, my, my thinking on that would be it could. I have a feeling this is not going to be the last time that we have to meet. To do this, and, and I, for one, would be very comfortable authorizing Evan and Ian Dorbell to, to uh, execute or push out a RFP and to execute an RFP based on the flood related activities. And that could be a motion. And I'll second that Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll vote too, since it's kind of weird. Um, that we're voting for ourselves. Um, okay. Good. How long was that for? Okay, no time. Okay. The specific flood event related. The floods again tomorrow, it'll reset the clock. <laughs> I can, I can go on for clarification. Yes. <laughs> From now on, ever. <laughs> or not, we're on the board. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, next up is information dissemination. So this is, I talked to Carl a little bit about this, but this is about um, me coming back to work, basically. Um, so how, like, how do we want to handle getting information out to the public on a regular basis, getting information into the town, uh, where and how information is being presented. And it occurs to me, like, as I think about this quite often, being really clear on the way we communicate is critically important. The prioritization and filtering of what is communicated is equally and maybe even actually more important because there's just so much information out there. Same message, clear message, and get the crap out. Like there's just a lot that people don't need to be faced with right now. Are you running into Um, there is definitely conflicting guidance out there, most of it's for towns as opposed to individuals. <laughs> um, I'm just going to call it law that needs to be sorted through so that the community, the citizens, you know, have a clear picture. They don't need a 30 page document, they need a uh, I believe a, a synopsis of, and you can find the document here if you want to read it, but some of these people that are dealing with loss of everything don't have the bandwidth to even deal with the massive amount of fluff that I'll call it. And some of it's important. Some of it is important information, but it's not the first thing. It's like the eighth thing in a list. 
and you know they're not at the first or second thing so I think there is a need for filtering and just making sure the way we present information is logical um, and it's just going to get more complicated over time there's zero data what are you proposing Closing the face of the select board? No. Well, I'm just saying that, like, I can't spend my time doing, I can't spend all my time doing this. And I'm not just doing this during the day, I'm doing other things too. Um, but, like, I need to go back to work. And we also need somebody who's going to disseminate some of this information. I did talk to Carl based on our last board meeting. He's planning on being in for a full week next week, which is good. I think we need it. Um, and I think he can help with some of that clarity and filtering, but over time, we're gonna need a good plan. And I just wonder if we should have somebody who we are confident in their ability to put succinct, clear messaging out there. Like, should we be thinking about hiring someone as on a temporary basis for the next three months? Who can help? I think Ron's going to have his hands full in the limited capacity we have him with all things FEMA and town municipal specific work as opposed to helping with filtering oh, yeah. information. Yeah, he's more administrative capacity, not informational. I guess that's but I should be clear that. Yeah. yeah, when I think about this, I'm actually not thinking about it in terms of a uh, town government. I'm thinking it more about people of Johnson. Um, yeah. And I mean, maybe this is homework that we need to think about. Uh, I don't know if a decision needs to be made tonight, but clearly, um, well, she's done a great job. It's a lot of hours of a day that Beth has been spending on making sure the citizens have the information. And yeah, select board members need to go back to work. Um, so uh, how, how many hours do you, I mean, you hire somebody and if you need to get to hire somebody, you need to execute an RIP and ensure <laughs> wow. the information person is not authorized, you're using 20 hours a week. Um, I mean, you're working 20 hours a day, so. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Like, I mean, both of us have calls coming in from the from the state and from FEMA. I get it on occasion, and from other like entities. And I'm not talking about that stuff. Um, I think that like when the town decides that we don't want to do something, or that we learn something from the situational reports or something like that maybe it's an hour and a half a day. Like, just compile the things from that day. Um, maybe at the end of the week, it's like, just go through and clean up everything that needs to be cleaned up. Um, I don't think that it needs to be a ton. I think it just needs to be somebody who can articulate clearly. I, uh, I envision it kind of in waves, I guess. There would be days where only it's an hour is needed, but maybe tomorrow, you know, more than an hour is needed. And some of this information comes in at you know nine o'clock in the morning. And if it's not posted until later in the day, it's not as helpful, I guess. So you would be connecting this person doing forward emails to them, or would they be receiving actual emails? And would you know they wouldn't they wouldn't receive anything directly in my mind. Somebody from the select board is input. I think they need, I think they'll need input from somebody from the town, whether it be select board or Ron or Carl. Uh, yeah, it'll have to be somebody from the town, but I don't think it needs to be any one person. I think that if any one of us has something that's important that we found, they could verify and then do something with it. Um, I'm going to offer a thought. Sure. And that would be, I don't think we should underestimate the capacity of either one or Carl to be able to handle this stuff. Um, and, and 
the other part of that thought is, I guess, a question, and that would be, because I have not been through an individual assistance event before. I've been through numerous public assistance events, and I can say pretty comfortably that that is something that Ron and Carl should be able to take care of. From the, from the municipal side, yeah. The individual assistance piece is a little trickier, um, but I would also offer a caution that I personally don't think the town should get but I think a lot of that really is stigma for small business association or state or or state. Or, or 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 and the list of ors keep going by the way. It, 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 it does, but but are we going to be a conduit for providing information of that nature to all citizens? I'm suggesting that I don't necessarily think that we should be doing. For a bunch of reasons, not the least of which is if somebody is unhappy with the decision that they get or the information that they get, who are they going to blame? Who's the first one they're going to blame? Us. And that was the long effect. And it really isn't very much we can do to influence that. If we could really have a major influence and act on their behalf. I might feel differently about that, but I don't think there's a whole hell of a lot we can do. Okay, so a question for you. When decisions are made at different levels, who is going to be the deliverer deliverer of that information? I mean, like the decision that FEMA makes about out. a property. When like, or the state or whomever, like, is there ever a situation where the town is going to be responsible for delivering information? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I know the answer to that question. Maybe that's a good question to ask people, folks. Is, do you have a plan to get information out to people? I ask that, and here's why I ask that. I ask that because if we're not ever going to be that person, I can support your thoughts on this. If we are going to be that person ever, then we should be preemptive in the way that we're communicating with our constitu constituents, our residents, whatever you want to call them, um, the people. Well, they're the people, right? Our people. Yeah. So yeah. if, you know, I think that that's what it comes down to for me, because I would much rather be proactive in saying, you know, here's what we think is available for you to help you through this. And when it comes back around with like, here's the hard stuff, we're gonna hear about that too. Well, I'll throw a question back at you. What, what resources do we have to, I don't think that's a FEMA reimbursable expense to hire somebody to work with FEMA. Yeah. I don't, you know, that's gonna right, be on right. us. Right. And my question to you is, do we have the capacity to do that? I don't think we do. Um, okay, and then that gets it gets even more complicated with our office folks going to be burdened with this. I guess maybe pause between all the questions and answers uh, between that and that. Then I don't foresee the town being involved between application for any assistance. I agree. Uh, I do believe um, that I can get a whole lot of team directly as a part of the emergency management team. You know, I guess, say for instance, the uh, SBA changes its rules and regulations for the split specifically. I have personally believe as one board member that that information should get out to the public um, via on the town website and just as those things are coming in, there's no capacity here to do it with the select board members. If I'm wrong and you know thinking about this, I guess I need to change my optics. Well I, 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 don't, I don't believe the town has any any role in actually filling out paperwork for individual assistance. Uh, but as information is available, I guess I believe that because it's sent to us, 
sending that information to individuals via the town Facebook and website, I feel like we're responsible for it. Maybe I'm wrong. I think that's probably fine as long as, as, long as you're not putting our stamp of uh, approval on it, that, that we're simply forwarding information from another entity. No, I totally agree. I mean, I don't think anything we're putting out there, with the exception of the dumpsters, is generated from us. Yeah, like today there was a information from the Vermont Emergency Management Team that came in about explaining the fire marshal inspection stamp. Oh, I haven't seen that. Um, I should go look. Okay. Too busy. Um, yeah, and like I, I feel like that would be helpful information for residents that have their stamps, yeah. you know, on their house. A green stamp means this. They're, they call them plaque cards, I think. A yellow one means this, a red one means this. But we didn't generate any of that information. It, it was just sent to us from BEM. I feel like that's helpful information to get out to the community. But the bottleneck is getting it out when that bottleneck is going to get worse. Our job is the state fire marshal. You know, I don't understand why they're not directly communicating to citizens because <laughs> that I don't get. We don't understand a lot of why things happen. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess I don't view it as our job, but I. But it's, it's, a, nice it's a public it's service. A nice yeah. public service, courtesy, whatever you want to call it. Just getting relaying that information and those things things like that i don't foresee stopping the mm -hmm. flow of them coming in anytime soon this could be especially a generational thing we, we live in the social media world um we can go to facebook, to facebook and you know, yeah, go to the facebook, facebook page and get your latest stuff. update um, so, 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 so some of this is fairly generational. Um, so, so some of my comments, comments maybe even more <laughs> along the line of, uh, you know, that generational riff. But I, 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 I get what, what you're saying. Um, I'm still not. I'm still not convinced that Carl and or Ron couldn't push some of that stuff out. And we, if we have to use Lydia to post, you know, notices on the on a Facebook page. So I've historically done that. Brian and I historically actually have done that. Right now I'm the only one doing Facebook. Uh, I don't even know if I, I know Lydia can't get in. We can put other people on it, but currently that's not the case. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, that might be. I mean, that might be a more global. Um, you, you may be raising a more global issue about sort of a general presence of the town out there in the social media world. Um, but in in the case of an emergency or a, you know a situation like this, I think it certainly brings it right home. Yeah. We don't, um, but I did ask for Instagram, and I also asked for Snapchat, and I didn't get either a long time ago. <laughs> we could. I mean, the thing is, that's how people get information now. They don't go to the newspaper. Yeah, it is, and that's why, you know, that's, people in my generation don't depend on that. I you know, think a lot of people do. Yeah. Yep. So, 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 so. I'm very really supportive of what the, I find it hard to believe unless you have somebody in your back pocket and you think you could slide into this. They wouldn't find somebody to do a um, public relations. I mean, I know people who are capable of it. I don't know if they would want to. Uh, So anyway, um, if we're not ready to act, that's totally fine. We can see how next week goes with putting it um, out to folks like Carl and others. Does, um, does but Carl I do think. Access to the, can, 
Um, Lydia can update the web website. I am the only one who can access Facebook, and Eric Osgood actually can too. I think. Great job for Eric. And Nat can <laughs> might Nat might be Eric's able to. Eric's retired, so maybe he'll do it on the select board salary. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two dollars an hour. I think it'd be a pretty good deal. Yeah, thirty thirty cents an hour. Maybe. Uh, I guess it's something to think about. Like, uh, information is going to suffer next to week. Uh, I guess what I'm hearing is we should try to do it in house for now and see how that goes. To the so I've had the conversation with Carl a little bit, but you know, the thing is that. very tech savvy, too. Um, I think that's what. The thing is, their worlds are very different today than they were two weeks ago. And and I get we hired Ron and we the have two resources too. now. Uh, I know, but the, I know. It's okay. We can see how the week goes and play it by ear because we have a, another meeting coming up not too long from now. Next week. We not have a meeting next week. No, it's the week after. No, I think we well, actually I mean, don't have yeah, a meeting right. until August. August. Yeah, because there's August. five Mondays. And... It was supposed to be our relaxing time where we didn't have. Remember how we were going to have like no agenda items, right. and then we had a bunch, and then July was going to be low key. <laughs> remember, <Okay. laughs> we're never planning a low key July again. That's what did it. Right? I know. I just you know, I didn't ask to have this board on the agenda, but that's what that did. Just for you guys to think about. We did get that email from Tasha Wallace about the uh, updating our flood zone regulation and having it be a river quarter based. And I will tell you that when those discussions were happening, you might have one of her okay? The methodology and the draft um, regulation that they're putting out there, it would gain us an extra five percent. They reimbursed it, so I don't. They, they lose track of it. The yeah. idea would give us an additional five percent. This is new used to do a simple. They cover fifty percent of what the feds did so. Okay. Right now, we're at 25% because we haven't adopted roads and codes. Um, we have an emergency management plan. We have a lamp. Um, we have what we, have we need of those ERAP standards to get us to 12.5%. If we adopted the river um, flood zoning regulation, and by the way, ours is really old. It was last adopted in 87. So we probably should look at that anyway. Um, if we adopted that corridor plan, it would get us an extra 5% or 70 to 80 to that. What are the impacts of adopting it? Well, I think I forwarded an email that I had, and I know you don't have a chance to look at it. I'll just say that I have a lot of heartburn about the approach to the river corridor aspect of it at the time. And to be absolutely honest with you, I don't remember all the concerns that I had, but I had a fair number of concerns. And, you know, I'm somebody that comes from towns that have had zoning. Yeah. Um, so I just, I remember it being very restrictive in terms of taking the identity of these river corridors. Now, having said that, when they update the FEMA maps, those FEMA maps are probably going to look a lot more like these river corridors that ANR has delineated. So we may be in that situation anyway. Because we're not going to say, you know, FEMA is going to do the, the permit maps. And if you're, if you're in this zone versus this zone, if you're in this zone, you're in a flood zone. If you're right across the line over here, you're not, but you might have to get flood insurance 
which is extremely sensitive. Because um, it's uninjected, it's you know, it's a very small pool and it's high exposure. Um, so we may we may end up getting it anyway because you know the more likely it's going to end up doing that just in the very near future. Uh, yeah, they're probably going to look at the my point in raising all this is we have 90 days from what I meant to adopt an ordinance, and we're not meeting again until August, and I don't know that that would give us time to adopt it if we wanted to. So, so are you suggesting we ask that... Um, Ron and Carl spent a little bit of time on that. They could certainly, I know, I, I almost think I'm going to take their own regulator for a zoning regulation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they meant the full Monty with this river coronary concept mm -hmm. or not. We could certainly ask him. He may be a much better source of information than that than I am. Because, you know, my knowledge is already six years old. Yeah. Um, I think it makes sense. I would add about Harper too, but I think we should ask them to work. These aren't all things to work. I think it's worth doing. I think we use it because it's the difference, it's an additional 5% of reimbursement that we could get. The question is is adopting the regulation worth the 5%? I don't know. All right. Sounds like we need more information on that part. You can look at I sent the copy of you can look at the because those maps show uh, the so called AMS. So, um, if we're going to have Ron and Carl look into it, and do you want them to draft a potential ordinance for approval? Um, or do you just want them to come back in first August with more information? We should have them draft it. If it's going to be, if we're going to run into time, potential time problems right away, let's just have them draft one. Why not? Well, the first question would be is there time enough? If, if we came back in at the August meeting, would there be time enough? And because there's an adoption process. What's how much vote time is? That was something that it does not require that does not require both. That that period. Um, but but there is there is an appeal period and all that. And then so that so I think the first question would be what's what's our drop dead date if we wanted to do it. And it as much as I hate to say it, it, it could be another board meeting. Okay, so I don't know. What to say. So to your point, I think I think it'd be good to have them weigh in and say whether or not they think it's even a good idea or not. Yeah, if if time wise for the adoption process. Is unrealistic. Drop it in the water and add it to the bigger list. I'm fine with that. If you guys, everybody else's, Ron and Carl, a good grasp on that. Maybe because it's blood related, Ron can weigh in. No, him and Carl seem to be working good together. So and Barry may have. They may have adopted. Carl's doing a good job. Yeah, I think they're doing great together. Are there any other agenda items? I didn't think we have that one on the agenda, but it's just, just a conversation. Okay. Uh, in that case, since we have no other agenda items, sure. any public input? There's no public. Am I the only one that's logged on? Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.